Concord, a sight and sound to stir a variety of emotions. But however we feel about this sleek, shining newcomer to our skies, it is without doubt the most beautiful aircraft ever to evolve from the mind of man. Nearly 57 years after the pioneers Alcock and Brown conquered the Atlantic in 16 hours 12 minutes, the trails no longer head for new geographical horizons. Now the search is for speed, and speed is Anglo-French Concorde's reason for existence. By the time Concorde embarked on recent testing flights, it had convincingly proved itself in most airways of the world. Is Concorde, its detractors ask, a fun plane for a few rich businessmen paid for at crippling cost? Or is it, as its champions insist, a genuine milestone in aviation history? On a proving flight to Gander in Newfoundland, a selected few prepare for their first experience of TSS, twice the speed of sound. Famous Concorde Nose, a trademark the British and French aircraft industries hope will be seen in increasing numbers throughout the world. Leaving London's Heathrow at breakfast time, the passengers returned in time for lunch. flight deck, bewilderingly complex. But Concorde herself, stretching her wings, is like a beautiful swan. Concorde begins acceleration into transonic speed. Approaching the speed of sound, Mach 1. I'd like to welcome you on board this Concorde flight to Gander. Our estimated flight time is 2 hours 45 minutes, and we should be flying at altitudes above 50,000 feet. I should like to draw Paradoxically, your Paradoxically, one of Concorde's main problems is the very speed for which it was built. Sonic boom, sound pollution, and from the high altitude flying associated with supersonic flight, ozone contamination and radiation dangers. But these fears have proved to be exaggerated. Excess sound, however, is still Concorde's big obstacle to a regular Atlantic service. Over the sea, no problem. At a height of 55,000 feet, Mach 2, twice the speed of sound, 1,350 miles an hour. Is this to be the image of Concorde man, sipping champagne 10 miles above the earth? The four Rolls-Royce turbojets are designed to cruise at this truly fantastic speed. Just under 200 miles from Gander, descent begins. Arrival, two hours, 28 minutes from London, an ocean away but at the tremendous cost of 1,200 million pounds spent on developing the aircraft by Britain and France. As Concorde brings the world into the supersonic age, the choice for the traveling businessman will be simple. A slower but less costly trip by jumbo jet, or Concorde, more expensive to fly in, but with the journey over in half the time. Even checking in at the airport, passengers will get the high-speed treatment. Back in London, the success of the flight is endorsed by Lord Boyd Carpenter, Chairman of the Civil Aviation Authority. But he gives a certificate of airworthiness to Sir George Edwards, former Chairman of the British Aircraft Corporation. Now 14 years after becoming the start of an idea, Concorde goes into service with British Airways. 
21st of January, 1976, a date for the history books. First passenger to check in for the flight to Bahrain, Paul Cooper of Grantham. Dressed in supersonic style for the occasion, Bob Ingham. Also among the passengers, Group Captain Leonard Cheshire. Viscount Leathers, and a lucky lady who won a seat on Concorde in a lottery. The man who flew the very first British-built Concorde in 1969, Captain Brian Trubshaw. Wishing the flight well, Margaret Thatcher. Royal patronage was given by the Duke of Kent. British Airways Deputy Chairman Henry Marking inaugurates the flight. As Concorde prepares for takeoff, its opposite number in Paris gets ready for Air France's inaugural flight to Brazil, times coinciding to the second. Flight BA-300 is underway. Pilot, Norman Todd. It is to be a flight of triumph. 3,515 miles in 3 hours 38 minutes. Concorde takes Britain and the world into the supersonic age. This is indeed Concorde's day.